and power for advanced character animation and its speed and flexibility to meet the needs of day-to-day -day commercial operations. Okay, this example is scanned in from a Nike logo that I found in a uh, uh, Rolling Stone magazine. It was actually about the size of a nickel or something. And um, so I scanned it in and cleaned it up. I wanted to start with sort of a worst case scenario. Matt's first example illustrates how Excel animation tools can quickly create a 3D object from flat art. So it was pretty dirty to begin with. Then it's been cleaned up in our paint system. And then we're going to turn this into a three-dimensional object. So we're going to edge detect it and simultaneously we'll extrude it and we can clean up the edges and do all sorts of nice nifty stuff to it in one pass. All right, so let's make an object with this. So I'm going to create one based on this black and white pattern in the, that it finds on the color screen. And now we want to turn it into a three-dimensional object. Let's go to our main menu and we'll add a new object. We're going to interactively create one. And what we're going to create is down here, it's called an image object. Now an image object is made from a paint canvas or an image in memory. Now we have a choice of either one, so I'm going to choose a window which is the canvas. Okay, we can threshold the image, we can set its minimum feature size, this deals with how often it will uh, chop up a, a rounded edge to make uh, polygons out of it, this sort of thing. We can also do some very nice detailing to it. Say we want to extrude it, we want to give it depth. So I'll make it two feet in depth. It's going to be 10 feet high, two feet in, or 10 feet wide, actually, and two feet high. Once the parameters have been set on a single menu, a click on the mouse begins the creation of a 3D model from a 2D image. Seconds later, the 3D object appears. OK, so here's our object and we can move around it. The Symbolics XL1200 with the Frame Thrower Vector Accelerator option boosts vector performance dramatically. Geometric operations now run nearly 20 times faster than on previous generation systems. Later, we'll see how to animate this logo. But first, Matt demonstrates a way to rapidly create a complex 3D object from scratch. Symbolics Modeler is the most powerful and flexible sculpting tool in the 3D world. Okay, so let's add a new object and play around with this a little bit. Let's add a cube. And I can edit the entire object. I can edit individual faces or groups of faces. I can edit individual or groups of segments. Or you can edit individual or groups of points. So let's take and start working on this object. And I'll cut these in the middle. Now, it's not visible what we did there. So let's turn the vertice display on for the object. Now we can see those points. Let's move around the back side. And I'll grab these segments. We'll cut those in thirds instead of half. Then I'll grab this top plane and cut it up. All right, so now that we've cut those faces up, let's pull back a little bit. And I'm going to extrude this top polygon. And now we'll scale it down. And then we'll move it back in space. Now let's grab a couple, one on either side. And let's look down on top of the object. We can look at the front, the side, the top, or the negatives of any of those. We'll pull the camera back a little bit. And let's extrude these out. Let's scale these down. Let's move them back in space. Here we go. And then let's grab this front face. We'll extrude it out. Now also, anything I'm doing interactively, I could be doing numerically. So I could give it a given amount to extrude by. In this case, maybe we'll say 20 feet. 
And we can scale it down. If I want to scale by a given amount, I can scale it down here. We'll scale it down to roughly a third. And we can extrude it again, in this case, interactively. And let's collapse that to a point. Okay. Now, it's getting to look more plane-like, but we want to add a little more delta to the wings. So we'll grab the points on the leading edges. And we'll move those along an axis of Z here. Pull it out. And now let's bevel off the leading edges of the wings and the tail. So what we'll do is we'll aim the camera at a point right here at the base of the tail. And now, no matter where I turn the camera, I'm aimed at that spot. Let's truck the camera in. And here we can look at the, the tail there. Now I'm going to bevel this edge off, and it's important to notice what's going to happen in this area. OK, so the system created a new face for us. It didn't leave a hole. It didn't leave a gap in the object that we then had to go back and seal up. And the reason this is is because we use a winged edge polyhedral modeler. And what that mouthful means is that it's sort of like sculpting with a balloon instead of sculpting with individual shingles. We basically start with a single sealed surface. And then I can bevel it, cut it, pull it, push it, um, do anything I want to to it. And it's, it's like I can keep pulling on this balloon infinitely, OK? Um, instead of having to build all these little shingles or tiles and put them together. Um, and so that means when I bevel off an edge like this, it'll automatically fill in a hole for me. I don't have to go back and now figure out where the hole is going to be and anticipate that and then sew that up and, you know, repatch it into the surface. So a lot of problems, or what would be, quote, problems, uh, just don't exist in this environment. And there's a lot of benefits, one of which we're going to come to right now, which is uh, displacement animation. So if we want to animate this object, we have a number of different ways we can do it. We can just move it forward in space. We can attach it to a trajectory, meaning we can inscribe a path in space and tell it to follow it and bank along. We can also um, attach displacements to it. Now, the first two of just moving it or moving it along a path would leave it as a rigid object. Okay. This, the third one, uh, displacements allow us to maybe make its wings flap, and, you know, give it some energy, give it, give it a little uh, excitement, give it a little character. Um, this is what Joe was talking about, putting character into your animation. Um, let me show you what I mean. First, we'll assign a displacement to this. We'll tell it to remember everything about its spatial placement and its vertex placement. Symbolic displacements operate in the 3D world in some sense like keyframes in 2D animation. Although, as you'll soon see, displacement animation has unique capabilities. Matt creates his first displacement by interactively manipulating the model he just built. Now what we'll do is we'll take and lift these up so it can flap its wings. Well, if we lift them up like this, that's fine, but it's pretty, still pretty static. It'll just be waving its little wings out at the end of its body without having any muscular involvement. So let's take and move them along an axis. But this time, I'm going to invoke a spline-based modeler, and I'm going to affect all the way out to the tip of the nose. So now the body is much more involved in this action. And now we'll add just a little extra to the tips of the wings. OK, so now we'll assign this as a new displacement. Matt creates three new displacements, which will be combined and animated to simulate organic motion. Matt's airplane will soon fly like a bird. And I'm going to just move it forward there. And let's say this is another new displacement phase three. All right, so now that we've created this object, and we've begun to animate it. Um, we've set up to get ready for animation. Let's move into the animation system. 
S-Dynamics controls the movement of 3D objects over time. In this example of displacement animation, the camera position remains fixed and our object moves. The graphical script interface helps us see how displacements work. Here we can see three scripted channels. The top channel shows the combination of our original object and our first displacement shape. Remember that this was wingtips pulled up. As the graph goes up and down, the first displacement shape is added in both a positive and negative direction to our original object. The result? Flapping wings. The second channel is our second displacement, the nose pulling back, added here to both the original shape and the first displacement. So the nose pulls back as the wings keep flapping. Finally, the addition of the third displacement pulls our plane off the screen. So now that the script has been recorded, we can play it back at any speed we'd like. We record bitmap files and then play those back because they give us the greatest flexibility. No matter how complex our scene, we'll always be able to have real-time playback. Three simple states combine to create a complex organic motion, and the artist can work independently on each part of the motion, making adjustments to the animation easy. But the real power of symbolics is that it lets you create animation scripts for simple objects, then reuse those scripts on more complex versions of the objects. To illustrate this, we make a smooth version of our plane and then run this complex object through the same animation we've just created. Now we'll see the complex version of the plane going through its movements based on what the simple one did, but there's a lot more subtlety to the movement in this one because it's got a finer polygonal mesh on it. Okay. So now that that's finished, let's take and play it in a loop. The Symbolics animation design process fits the human model. It allows the artist to start with rough sketches and move to smooth, finished animation.